Good afternoon and welcome to More Than Meets the Eye. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today we are going to be doing the in-depth review of the G.I. Joe Classified series, HasLab His Tank. Over 16 months waiting for this baby to be born, and oh man, was it a wonderful day yesterday getting this guy and opening the package. I am so happy that I was able to record it and you were able to share it with me. That was, that was fun, that was cool, and honestly, as a person who is blind and who's only heard people describing this his tank, and honestly, uh, how many people really describe things well for the blind? Because, well, they assume you're looking at the picture when they describe it, so they don't really describe much. Therefore, you know, things like this really nice detail on the treads, I didn't know, I didn't know about. I didn't know about a lot of things about this figure, but it got him in the hopes that everybody else was right. Uh, this was one of those, I bought it on trust kind of things. Everyone else was freaking out about it, thinking it was cool. And honestly, I like the his tanks, so I thought it was really neat. Though I do wish it was the Mark II, I think it was called, where the uh, where the, the, the front of the his tank actually like pops up and becomes a, a watchtower thing. That's really fun. I liked that his tank a lot, and I wish I could figure out which, which his tank it was. But this is the big his tank, and I got it all of the characters on it that come with it the hiss gunner the hiss pilot and the hiss tactician is in the back and I'm gonna go off to the side there give you a good wrap around view oh man this thing is this thing is amazing i've got two bats on the back bumper hanging on to the rail that they can hang on to because i figured you know what better outside personnel to have on a his tank than a couple of battle android troopers you know so i put those guys back there and uh yeah so we're gonna get into this and really go in depth about uh, not spin it around this way we go in depth about this guy and talk about all the fun aspects of him and do some size comparisons with some 1 12th scale vehicles that i've shared on this channel before especially um the Wrecking Rick from the WWE Wrecking Series. It's uh, on the floor over there, and I'll bring it up and do a size comparison uh, as soon as possible. So this is tilted like that. Uh, it's a, uh, I don't know if I'm getting everything in shot. Let me find my, there's my doohickey telling me where the center of the screen's at, so I can't bring it over here just a bit more. Then I can rotate the, uh, the Jeep around, the Willys 112 scale diecast Jeep. So, Let's get into the review, doing a nice little loop around of this guy, and uh, I'm actually going to get out of my seat now and do a stand-up so we can actually talk about this stuff and I can discuss things. So we got the guns here on the front, and these guns are really neat. Uh, they're, they're one solid, well, they, they have a joint, but the guns don't move independently of one another, and it's a bit rubberized, which is something I'm a little sad about. I like a nice hard plastic gun, but the rubberization there will mean that this thing doesn't break as easy. Uh, I am scared of this, uh, you know, the canopy and the engine thing because both of those feel like they could break pretty easily. But all we have to do is you can actually pull this guy out. There it goes. And let's pick it up just a bit. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but there's a button in there. And this button goes in and pops out on a spring when you have the gun, you know, when you remove the gun. So there's no obscene hole just hanging out underneath your his tank going, well, there used to be an accessory there, but it's no longer there. You know, so that's really cool. I like that. I think that's, that's really neat. You can have different ways of displaying this without worrying too much. Uh, now, coming over here, we've got this wonderful front area. That's, that's got some little details in it, but mainly it's just a place for the lights. And I have no idea which lights I'm clicking, but these are all fun lights. So there's some cool lights going on in there, and uh, there's some dashboard lights, but what I really want to focus on is the sculpting on the side. Every, they've got so many rivets in this. There's, there's rivets everywhere. Like, this is one hardcore thing that's built, you know, just built tough. Like, this thing is... Ah, Rosie the Riveter went crazy on this. Look at all those rivets just everywhere. The rivet designs, the sculpt work. It's just, it's heaven to my fingers. And this 
G.I. Joe classified series, uh, his tank canopy is my favorite one out of the bunch. The other one is just a solid canopy. There's nothing special going on about it. And if you have a G.I. Joe uh, his tank from the past, then you know exactly what that looks like. But this one's got the opening doors on the side, which are just really fun. It is a little worrisome with the uh, with with this being clear plastic and all. So it is my advice to you, the collector out there, if you have a his tank, please be careful with this piece. It, it may break um, because it is some really nice clear plastic. It is really nice clear plastic. Let's go ahead and open it up. Now the best way I found to open up this one, because you know, like I said, I am trying to be careful with it, is to open up the side and put your fingers in there and then pop it up really close to the front. That way you don't accidentally you know, break something. And now we have to spin the top turret around to open up this canopy all the way. And inside we have our His Tank driver, which we will talk about him in a separate video because I just want to focus on the His Tank in this one. So let's undo his five strap, his five point harness there. It's really cool. The, uh, the harness has, a, uh, the top bit has a hole in it and the bottom bit has a peg on the underside of it. So you bring the top bit down over the driver's head or torso, and then you plug it into that other one. And then you use your fingers to kind of shove in the excess in behind him, and there's some slots built into the chair where those excess pieces will fall in. Because you do have to stretch it out a bit in order to get your big human hands in there to, uh, to move it around. He's got some fun stuff in there. He's got a... Um, He's got a joy, a, a, a this this cool thing. Ah, it, it's like the um, it's like on a jetliner, you know, when the pilots have that, that that big bar that they can pull back and make it go uh, faster. That that that's what he's got on his left. He's got one of those big just handlebars that you can pull back or forward, and it's articulated. And the figure is loose enough in there that he can actually pull it and move it back, and it won't really affect him too much. And then on the other side. We have a joystick, which is the left and right motions of him. And let's go ahead and pull him out now and look inside. Okay, so we're gonna pull his hands up like that, get one hand off of that one, get his other hand off of that one, and we're gonna pull him up and out. And yes, I'm gonna talk about him really in depth on another video coming up later this week, because this is a nice action figure. He is really good. And let's go ahead and put him over here to the side. There we go. We can set him right there. Look at his shiny. He's so shiny. Stand up straight, buddy. There you go. Okay, now let's do a, uh, you know, just because I, uh, I feel like it. We are going to pull off his helmet, and we're going to have Scrap Iron kind of just checking this thing out. All right, so there's Scrap Iron in the front and an idea of how large the his tank is. If he's standing on the ground, oh, his tank driver, he don't fall forward. It's bad, his tank driver. His tank driver, don't be, don't be a nuisance. No. Good. That's a good his tank driver. Okay. So we've got the Scrap Iron, who is actually in the G.I. Joe lure, the designer of the his tank. So I thought it was very nice that we get a, we got a scrap iron in the G.I. Joe Classified series before the His Tank came out, so that we could just kind of have him hanging out here. Now, let's, uh, let's talk a little more about the details inside this, and then Scrap Iron can show us more stuff. Inside, I won't be able to really show it to you too well, but there's a big screen in there, just a big old touch screen or something, and... There's all of these little panels and textures going on. There's not, it's minimalistic on the textures, but that's because these are supposed to be a bunch of big panels, and I assume they have some printing on them and stuff. And um, when you hit the button, you, uh, let's see, let me turn that just a bit more under the there. there it goes. When you hit the button for the bottom bit, you can actually turn on those interior lights, I think. I'm pretty sure my roommate said you can. That's really cool. I like the seat here. They've got some really excellent leather sculpt texture going on in this seat. Like this guy sits in a nice leather seat. It's big, it's broad, it leans back. This is a comfy, comfy seat. It's a wrinkles. They got so many wrinkles in the bottom of that seat. Like this thing has been sat in for a while. That's cool. They didn't have to put so many wrinkles in. 
they didn't have to do that. Feeling inside with my fingertips, we got a pedal and another pedal in there. One on either side for his feet. I have no idea what those pedals will do. Would do since you know the controls for it are up here by the hands, but I have a feeling maybe the pedals are for the brake for the left and the brake for the right. So that's what I'm assuming. And that's really cool that they actually sculpted those pedals in there underneath that nobody can see, but you can totally feel. And that's the inside of this cockpit. It's got a, I wish it had a little more interior texture on the sides because you can feel kind of a, a spar piece where the uh, screws attach together. But that also kind of makes it just feel like an interior hydraulic system to keep this pilot's chair stationary. So they did manage to sculpt the uh, the connector points for the two halves of the his tank where it was screwed together into something that feels like hydraulics and that is excellent uh, i do wish there was a little more sculpting on the interior of the plastic in here but for the most part this is excellent i do love everything about this there's even vents on either side so that he can get some air conditioning why they included air conditioning vents i don't know but they did and there's some rivets too no wait those are speakers He's got vents and speakers in here. This guy, this guy can just, oh man, he, he can fight with the best of them, have air conditioning, and listen to some heavy metal music while he does it. That is, wow, okay? They didn't have to include the speakers there, but they did, they did, they did. Now this uh, canopy, closing it back up, we got some nice rivets to come across to kind of do the riveting of the uh, clear uh, stuff to these armor pieces that come up and around that are part of the G.I. Joe classified canopy and that's excellent. Coming over here to the side we've talked about all the rivets that come down the side of this and then there are there's a port in the side down here that nothing we got from the his tank actually fits into that port. I don't know what's going on with that port but there's one on each side right behind the canopy area and uh, right below the ladders, so I'd love to figure out what those are for. Maybe we're going to get some sort of, um, like a fuel truck or something, and that's where the fuel hose will go. But above that little port, uh, right, by the way, that port is right at the edge of these treads. And, uh, where's scrap iron here? Scrap iron, where'd you go? I've been moving this thing around and I forgot where I put you. No, not you, driver. Man, he's, he wants to be a part of the video so badly. No, driver, stop it. No, don't you do that. That, no, don't, don't you do that either. Okay, good. Scrap Iron, are you over here? No, that's Beachcomber. Why did you fall, Beachcomber? Where did Scrap Iron go? What did I do with Scrap Iron? Oh, here he is. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> Scrap Iron traveled. Uh, so here's Scrap Iron on the side, and the, the side of this um, tread goes all the way up. He can actually, like, pick his arm up a bit. Oh, this arm's a little bit stiff. There we go. He can pick his arm up and rest it on top of the tread. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. He's posing for the picture with the new tread. Uh, with the new tank. I like that. <laughs> hey, Mom, look at me. <laughs> so, that's cool. Um, let's set him over here. There you go. Sit next to the driver and don't knock him over. Okay. Now we come over here to the treads, and we've got this really fun G.I. Joe Classified series uh side of the tread they did include the retro original side of the tread but that's just a flat piece of metal with very minimalistic sculpting done in it and honestly this new this this tread for the gi joe classified series is more fun for the fingertips so i like it more i like these really fun cuts in the front for like speed i guess and it's got these rivets everywhere they went to town on these and they spaced them out so perfectly my god who does, who spent the time to actually put in every individual one of these rivets into the original design? Wow, thumbs up to you, engineer. Thumbs up to you. That was cool. You didn't have to do that so well, but you did. Now this thing does come off, and I knocked over, really? You knocked over the, the driver as well? Oh, man. When I knock something over, I knock stuff over, you know? That's, it's a, it, it, it's a gift. It's a gift. Come here. Okay, all right. Just stand over here. Don't you, don't you do more stuff, okay? Talking to some people. All right, I'm not able to get this thing off right now. Uh, I put it on there really. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so taking it off, we get these 
We get these wheels that they actually did spend the time to sculpt, even though they would be covered by the tread piece, by the tread cover. Each one of these wheels is still very well sculpted, and that's nice. So we're going to put the tread cover back on and knock off a uh, uh, missile. All right, so put the tread cover back on. There's the tread cover. Come on. There it goes. There it goes. Nice. And let's put the missile back. And that just brings us to talk about the missiles. We talked about the missiles a bit yesterday during the box opening. And uh, we're going to talk about a bit more now. I don't like these missiles as much as I thought I would. And I think it's because they're hollow plastic. And we were just spoiled by the scrap iron and anti-armor drone here. There's the anti-armor drone missile. It's made of some heavy-duty rubberized plastic. It feels heavier in the hand. It feels you know, weighty and it's nice. It's, it's got a nice feel to it. It's got a nice weight to it. This one is really well sculpted. It's got some great sculpt, but it's missing the weight that makes it feel really amazing. And that's a shame. And this is where the negative comes in. One of the negatives I have on this guy. This port in the back. They could have designed it like they designed the port in the back of the anti-armor drone. You have that little point there that you can plug blast effects into. And I thought, like everybody else thought, when we got the scrap iron and anti-armor drone, those blast effects would be able to be used with the missiles that came with the Hiss tank. And we were all wrong. We were all completely wrong about that. And I don't like that I was wrong about that. And I don't like that they didn't do that. It was so simple to do. You already had it all there. You hadn't even designed scrap iron in the anti-armor drone before you designed the his tank. So you have no excuse on this one. No excuse at all. There is only a couple of guns that uh, current blast effects fit into, and we're going to talk about that real quick. We're going to bring that up because I just want to get it out of the way. Okay, the two guns that Blast Effects fit into are these really big machine gun things on either side of the turret. There's one on each side of the turret, and they're anti-personnel machine guns. And they have these giant uh, canisters of ammunition. Remember I couldn't figure out where those were on the box opening? They fit into these, these big guns, these big mini guns on either side of the cannons for the his tank. And those are the only things that Blast Effects fit into. The his tank guns here... These guns are slightly too large for traditional blast effects. Even, this is the one that got me the most, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, nuts, I just knocked over somebody. All right, let's see. There it is. Okay, so this one's the one that, that, that actually kind of upset me. We got these really cool blast effects in the, um, in the Steel Core Troopers 2-pack for their... Uh, fire, you know, their, uh, their, uh, blah, 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 jet packs. And I thought, like a lot of other people thought, that those blast effects would be able to be used with the Hiss tank because they're a little too big for guns. Like, for instance, let's just, okay, let's see, All right? And there's a gun. Okay, so see, there's this gun here, and we could try and put it into one of those ports, but it is too large for these ports like that. It actually can fit into those ports. My bad. It it does, but it's a very weak connection. No, wait. It's actually pretty strong, but I don't like it. I don't like how heavy it, it weighs, but that does, that is something you can do. You can put the jetpack effect from, uh, from your Steel Core Troopers 2-pack into the miniguns on the side, but the jetpack effect is too small for these guns. It is too small for this, uh, Spin these around, spin you around a bit. It's too small for the guns on the nose either. Look at that. Boom. Nose guns, let go, it falls out. That's... That doesn't make any sense to me. Why are you going to do this? You know, and another further thing that upset me was that these don't work with the, the Transformers blast effects. They're too small for Transformers. They're too large for G.I. Joe. And the missiles are... Well, the missile ends are actually too large to put the other end of those blast effects into. So only two things in this entire thing, weapon-wise, actually work with current G.I. Joe blast effects. Nothing else works with current G.I. Joe blast effects on this. And uh, I, I could have sworn to you. It was... I, 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 I hope I wasn't alone in thinking that the scrap iron, uh, you know, the rocket effects that came with that, 
who would actually plug into the weapons or at least the rockets here on the uh, his tank. So that is the one thing that will be removing a point from the his tank is the fact that they put a lot of blast effects out into the market after the his tank came out and not there none of them work with the his tank and that's a uh, that's just something I wanted to mention. So let's go ahead and spin this uh, this cool turret around. We just finished talking about the treads. We talked about these rockets. By the way, there's two, four, six rockets on each side. Fun part about the rockets is that the um, there's a little pole that extends so the rocket can get a little more range, you know, a little further away from the his tank, which is really cool. You don't want that back uh, flow from the rocket, the jet propulsion from it, actually like staining your his tank. Though I think some people may actually take like some sort of charcoal pencil or something and rub in some uh, some exhaust uh, charcoal, you know, some, some some black exhaust stuff on the side here where the rockets have flown by. You know, I, I'm sure that would leave a black mark on the side of the tank when it does that. Uh, these things are stacked two by two in a vertical formation. And let's go ahead and pull it out of its socket there. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, yes. I'm trying not to have it yank out, but none of this stuff wants to come out smoothly. You, you always have to yank it, and that's a, a bit of a shame. All right. It'd be cool if we gotten some locking pieces so that we could just unlock it and pull it out and then lock it back in. Uh, so this is the thing. We saw it yesterday. Pretty big. No way to connect this to anything else but the his tank, though, unless you were to um, you know, create something yourself, which with Lego, I'm pretty sure you can manage it. Now, another neat thing, and I talked about this on the uh, video yesterday, but uh, we'll talk about this now. Bring it around. Make sure we lined up. There it is. All right. So this, it's got this cool like manhole cover that folds down over the socket that the missiles plug into and that's neat and furthermore it's got it's got rivets in it it's got sculpted rivets it's just a piece of plastic that folds down and they still took the time to sculpt into it ah, my fingers love this thing okay now the turret let's get up here to the turret because the side of this tank is just more rivets and really really intricate ways but not really much more on the texture side Turning the cannon around, we got these really nice cannons. Let's go ahead and bring out, uh, not you. Where's the guy that I've been doing size comparisons with for a long time? Oh yeah, I got two of them sitting on the back of the his tank. So we'll just grab one of these bats. Come here. All right. We've talked about the bats and size comparisons. So if you've been a fan of my channel, you've been watching my stuff, then uh, you can get a giant, a, better, a good understanding of the size of the bat compared to other things in VI Joe which will allow you to better understand this when I talk to you about it. So let's go ahead and put the bat next to this gun. We'll put his foot at the bottom of it. There it is. This gun on the top of the his tank is as long as the bat is tall. That's wild. That's wild right there. That is a big gun. It is a big gun, and it doesn't feel that big whenever you compare it to the rest of the his tank. But when you put the, the bat beside it, it gets large. That's... It's just wild. I, I, I wanted to showcase that because I love these giant guns on this his tank. They are fun. They are interesting. I just dropped the bat. Why did your backpack fall off? Don't, don't do that to me. We're in the middle of a video, bat. Don't you, don't you play those games. All right. So let's spin this back around. These guns have some minimalistic texturing on the bottoms and very smooth coming up here to the front where it's got the vents cut into it around the edges so that the... Uh, the Backflow from the projectile can expand around and uh, make a nice little muzzle flash. Okay, coming in here, we've got the his tank gunner. She's in the gunner seat here. Let's go ahead and peel her hands away from these handles and pull her out. She's an excellent figure. We're going to talk about her later this week as well. We're going to go ahead and knock over the gunner again. Put the hit I mean the driver. Put the gunner next to the driver. Uh, gunner, are you going to fall over too? You're going to fall over too. Sentinel, don't you let go of that light. You're my light guy. No, nuts. Both of them fight. Interesting. Bring these guys over here. Come on. Lower your arms. There you go. Lower your arms. Excellent. Stand there and look pretty. Good. Good job. Okay. So in here, we got a fun basket at the bottom that's got some good textures on it. And that's where the um, 
That's where the feet rest. It would have been cool if they'd gotten something to plug into the, the hole at the bottom of the foot, but oh well. In the uh, behind the gun here, we've got a handle to rotate and spin the gun and fire it. So your his gunner can hold onto those handles and that will hold her in place. In front of it, we have a removable blast shield. We can just peel that off. This blast shield is amazing. We talked about it yesterday, but I didn't know where it went. It's got an, a really, really great cobra emblem etched in this. This is, this is a beautiful cobra emblem. I love this cobra emblem. I love the ratcheted. There's more rivets around it. There's so many more rivets around this thing. This thing feels like a heavy duty piece of armor that's designed to protect the gunner from destruction by the Jobs. And that's really cool. There it goes, and it just slides in pretty easily by putting it between the guns and uh, lowering it down just a bit so that the only thing that pops up the edge of the gun is the head of the snake. That's cool. I love that. I love that. The guns on the sides are really well articulated. They have a little swivel. Um, they don't rotate very well to the left and right. You actually have to kind of just pull it out and then rotate it around, and then you can kind of put it back in because of the way it's shaped. We can, there's, there's different places you can put it back in, but that grips really heavy, so it's such a tight grip in there that you cannot spin the gun while it's in place. You just gotta pull it out and uh, play with it. So just, we just, we just pull it out, there it goes. Okay, so we'll talk about this real quick. The gun here has a really cool handle on either side. It's, it's a neat gun because it's got handles on the back and there's a little, uh, there's some buttons there that you have to press and it doesn't have a traditional trigger. It's got these handles on the back with weird buttons for triggers. And that's because it's a stationary gun made to be held in two hands and just take the impacts. Uh, it reminds me a lot of guns that I've seen from World War II movies and stuff. So that's a really cool anti-personnel, anti-aircraft weapon that, um, it works out pretty well and I like the little the little stand it has it moves around and you can even you know try and design something so you can keep that on the uh, you, know, you can put it on the ground and work it as a stationary thing okay let's continue talking about this we are this uh, the the turret here really well done it moves around and interestingly enough if you move it around right Unlike other turrets, I don't know what I just knocked over, but I'm glad it's gone now. Uh, unlike other uh, G.I. Joe classified turrets, like you, you could put them in, but once you put them in, they're kind of in there. This one you can take out. You can get the basket underneath it, the gun on, guns on either side of it. This is an entire, just really fun little assembly that just pops in there and leaves this giant hole I can fit my entire arm into right there in the center. Then we're going to leave this out for the rest of the review so that we can better see inside when we talk about the interior. So I'm just going to lay the gun basket over here off to the side and let's further talk about this. Uh, now this is another fun part. Right behind where the canopy connects and right in front of the turret you will find that there's a different textured plastic here. It's got some rivets on it. It's made of resin, not normal ABS like everything else here. This is resin. Do not drop this. I, 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 I scared myself because it fell off the table and it bounced on the floor and I was worried because this is harder stuff. This is, I don't know if it's clear or not, but what I do know is that it feels like if it will shatter if it hits the ground too hard. So be very careful with that engine piece there. Now let's turn it sideways a little bit so you can take a look and see that really cool engine. Oh, that's neat. It's just kind of a cylinder that runs across the entire length of the his tank with some um, hoses and wires connected in the center. But it is still an engine that has an engine canopy that you can remove. And where did I put scrap iron? We're gonna get scrap iron out again. Do we have any scrap iron? No, wait, you're not scrap iron. You're scrap iron. Yeah. Cafe. Okay, so, one second. Computer, play Modest Masorski. I don't know what that was, but that was annoying. All right, so we can put scrap iron here. You know, you, you, you hook his foot in the little ladder onto the side of the vehicle, and now scrap iron can work on the engine. I just wish we had gotten some wrenches or something. You know, something cool. We did get a hammer for some percussive engineering, but... Um, 
I don't, you know, it's more like a mole for, for, for beating up people with, but we do have a hammer for percussive engineering if we need one, uh, because all tank crews require percussive engineering sometimes. So, and if you don't know what percussive engineering is, look it up. All right, so the ladder folds very well back up, and we can put this down in here. Now, there is a way, there's a right way and a wrong way to put the engine cover down. Just feel the edge that has the little, the little teeth in it, the little teeth edge on the side, and uh, you can feel where there's a hole in the plastic where that's going to line up. If you put it in the other way, it's, it's going to just sit there and get caught up on these ladders. Like you'd have to take the, fold the ladders back to put this thing in wrong, but then it doesn't snap. It just lays there and wiggles. So you want to put it in the other way and snap it. You know, just keep it like slap. Fold the uh, ladders in on top of it, and that is the engine compartment. That is really fun. And I like the, the texture. It's a weird texture. What it feels like is the, um, the, the, that soft skin that a reptile has around their neck. That's what that texture feels like, and that's cool. The little wrinkled skin, if you've ever had a reptile around the neck area, they have all those little wrinkles that kind of come together, and that, that, that's what it feels like. They, they, just, they just went the extra mile there. All right, now we're coming around to the back of it, and then we're going to do size comparisons because we are almost done with this thing. Oh, before I forget, I wanted to mention, we're going to flip this thing like this real quick. It's got sculpting on the underside. It's got these cool line things coming down, like, you know, it's made to, uh, nothing can hang up on the underside of this thing, and this thing is going to be nice and solid, but I just wanted to showcase they textured the underside. They didn't have to, but they did. I like it. All right, now let's see. On the back here, we've got this really nice bumper that's really wide, and two Cobra bats can fit on it just fine, holding onto this rail above that isn't connected to the, uh, the turret. This rail's got three connection points to it, and then you can have the G.I. Joe classified figures hold on to it, and they hold on to it very well. Uh, it's not a difficult chore to get them their hands on around this uh, thing. You just kind of just pop their hands on. It's, uh, it's really nice. They, 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 they figured out how to make a really amazing rail, and that hand pops on very easily, and that's the first time that's happened. Uh, I have had difficulty popping these hands onto anything. But this rail in the back, they designed it so that you just pop the figure's hand on. And there's, there's, there's not much effort in that. There's not much effort in that at all. Now, let's talk about my favorite part of this, his tank. So you fold up this back cover. And below it, uh, before I get into that, we've got the hook so that uh, it can carry things. It was supposed to be a two different sized hook, but I don't, I don't get what they're talking about. Maybe the hole there is supposed to be the other size. Uh, and then there's a little like a hook there. I don't know, but uh, it does fold up nicely, and it does sort of kind of feel like a snake. Now, we're going to come over here, and we're going to finish this up by opening the back compartment and folding it down. Oh, it's like a little ramp. It's so cool. I love the little ramp that comes down, and of course, something had to fall over. Why, did you, you know, why not? Something's always falling over on my videos. You can never be, keep these guys from falling over. All right. Just, just stand over there, guys. Okay, Alex, don't fall. Don't fall. Stop it. Okay. So in here, I have the His Tactician, and he's playing on the tablet that came with Scrap Iron. I do wish that they had given him a tablet so that he could have it inside while playing with it, but luckily we've got one from Scrap Iron. And we're just going to lay him down over here with the other guys. He's just going to kind of fall on the ground, and it's okay. We're not, we're not going to worry about it. Not gonna lose scrap iron stand. I'm just gonna set those guys over there for now and uh, knock that off. Another another missile. Let's just go ahead and knock that off. Oh, put the missile back. Always putting these missiles back on. <laughs> You'd think with all their love of rubber, with um, with all of the weapons they've been giving us, the squishy bendy weapons, they would given us rubberized missiles that would stick onto those connection points better than these hard plastic missiles do. But they're not even resonating. And they don't even feel like they're made out of the same ABS plastic as everything else. It's, they, they, they feel a little cheap. I'm going to be straight with you. Those missiles feel cheap. Now, in here, we've got the shovel in its own little compartment. The shovel came with gunner, and uh, the hammer came with gunner. But they, they gave us these cool places where they sit. And also, there is a weapons rack in here for every one of the weapons that came with the figures. There's an amazing little chair in here off to the side that the tactician can sit in. And that's another detail they gave us. That chair 
has an entire cobra emblem molded into the back of it. They didn't have to mold that into the back of it, but they did. And then the floor here is individual steel tiles. Like it feels like a steel floor of a tank. They they didn't have to do that either. And then it comes in here, and I'm gonna knock stuff over while feeling around. There's a rounded end to it. This thing goes deep. It feels like it's got a lot of space, and I'm just knocking stuff over. But it's all great. Let me put my hand in there and show the top area. And I've just been keeping the hands in there because uh, the negative to this is they didn't give us a little compartment that would open up. I think if they had given us a compartment in here towards the end that could just, you know, you peel it open, you could store all the spare hands in that compartment. But they didn't give us anywhere to really store the spare hands, sadly. You could put them in the basket at the uh, bottom of the turret, in the hand basket, uh, if you wanted to. But then this piece just, let me see, any more textures I missed in here? No, the wall, the back wall is textured, by the way. The back wall is textured. I just, I just wanted to admit, let you know about that. I, uh, I found that to be really fun. And there's an area that's kind of like a little cubby on the side. Is there a cubby on this side too? No, they straightened that one out. There's no cubby on this side. But there is a cubby on this side. And it falls all the way down. And I think that's a good place where we can store fists. So let's get this one. No, I don't want to get Gunner's fists. Let's grab it. Grab, 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 grab the little hand. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna see if that will go in there. Uh, I don't want to try it because it feels like it's going to be difficult to get those things out. But there is a, uh, there's like a slot cut in here that goes behind the weapons rack. So let's close this up and let's put the turret back down and let's do some final thoughts with a couple of size comparisons. And oh no, there it goes. Snap that back into place. And then rotate this around until it falls into its proper socket. There it goes. It's locked in place. Let's spin you around and set you there. Not on top of whatever that was. Oh. Scrap iron. Scrap iron, just go over here. We're just going to lay scrap iron down on the ground over there. Now let's bring out scrap iron's drone first and foremost. And knock over some more things while I do it. Okay, so here's scrap iron's drone. And Scrap Iron's helmet. I'm going to go ahead and put the Scrap Iron's helmet back on. I just like Scrap Iron's face. He's honestly going to be in the top 10 of the year because of that face sculpt. That is so, so well done. Okay, so set Scrap Iron there. Now, here is the uh, the drone. And the drone is so... It's a baby tank! Actually, real quick. Here's a thought, and we're doing it for the first time here because I just literally had this thought. Let's open this back area up. And... Can you actually... <sighs> Missed opportunity there, Hasbro. Missed opportunity. You could have made the drone a little thinner. Maybe given it the six-wheel drone. Uh, maybe there will be a drone that we get that can actually just roll out of this tank. But that drone does fit nice on the ramp, doesn't it? Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of cool sitting on the ramp. I like it. Let me set the drone off to the side. That's a little comparison with the drone. It's a cool one. And snap that back into place and lower that way okay let's get the biggest thing out first to measure and i have to store it over here off to the side because it's so ridiculously large his tank's going to come closer to the camera i'm going to walk over here i haven't left you guys don't, don't worry i'm still here and oh god this one's a pain to move but we can do it 